Welcome to our review on atomic structure. The first thing we actually need to do here is understand three terms that we've probably been using in science for quite some time, but maybe don't know the actual definitions for. So the first one, element, that's just a substance whose atoms have the same atomic number. An atom is the smallest particle of an element, and a molecule is a particle that consists of two or more atoms that have been chemically joined together by these things called bonds. So if we consider atoms in a little bit more detail now, the first thing we're going to consider is the actual size of an atom. So what we use to actually describe the size of an atom is something called the atomic radius. And hopefully from maths, we know a radius is half of a diameter. We can also talk about the length of bonds within atoms. So what we actually find is that the length of a bond is going to be the distance between the center of two joined atoms. And what we tend to find is that when we look at atomic radii and the bond lengths, they're both typically around 10 to the power minus 10 meters. Or we could write that in a different way of 0.1 nanometers. But do remember that number because it does seem to be something that the exam board are quite keen on in any of their practice material. So your typical size of an atom is 10 to the power of minus 10 meters. If we now have a little look inside the atom itself, what we find there are basically two key parts we need to remember. We have the nucleus, which is the structure in the center there. And then around the nucleus, we have these shells. So if we look to see what makes up an atom, there are three subatomic particles, protons, electrons, and neutrons. The nucleus contains the protons and the neutrons. So that means that the nucleus is actually positively charged because the protons are positive, And that's where it's got most of the mass of the atom. In the shells around the outside of our nucleus, we find the electrons. And electrons have a negative charge. Therefore, they are the negative part of our atom. But what you'll find is in any atom, the number of electrons is the same as the number of protons. So overall, atoms are neutral. They have no charge. If we consider these subatomic particles, then we need to know three bits of information about them. First of all, you need to know their names. Secondly, you need to know what's called the relative mass. And thirdly, their relative charge. So a proton has a relative mass of one and a relative charge of plus one. And the plus is important. Neutrons have a relative mass of one and no relative charge, so it's zero. Electrons have a relative mass of 0.0005 and a relative charge of minus one. Now, we're using this word relative quite a lot because when we're talking about the things that make up an atom, they are absolutely tiny. So if we were to use mass in grams, the number would be so small, it would be utterly ridiculous to try to write down. So we use a relative mass because it gives us nice simple numbers like one that we can then use. Make sure that at the end of this video that you do know the definitions of our key terms, element, atom, molecule. You know the size of an atom and also the bond length that we find in typical atoms. You know where we find protons, electrons and neutrons within the atom. And that you've also remembered the key facts from this table about the relative mass and the relative charge of each of those subatomic particles.